Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to learn how to create VPC using CloudFormation template. So let's get started. First of all, I'll be opening Visual Studio Code and in that saving a file with the name vpc.yaml and then after that, I'll be searching for CloudFormation documentation and in that, let's go to the user guide. A template is a JSON or YAML formatted text file that describes your AWS infrastructure. The following examples show an AWS cloud formation template structure as well as its sections. Now you can see that this template can be written using JSON or YAML. For my personal preference, I'll be making use of YAML and this are the sections that we mentioned throughout our template. So I'll just copy this template and I'm going to paste it over here. Okay. And it's not compulsory to use all the sections. So few sections which I won't be using in this particular um, video are these many and the rest of the things which is not useful, I'll be removing them. Right. So we are done. Okay. Be saving this particular file. And then after that, we'll go from top to bottom. Okay. So the first thing is about format version and we'll be mentioning this particular version for our template okay so then with this within the description we'll be adding what is it all about so this is a template for vpc and for, for VPC. This is a template for VPC. Control S. For time being, I'll be commenting metadata as of now and also the outputs. I'll be commenting these two. Okay. Then we'll be working on parameters and resources. Okay. So first of all, you should know how to create VPC manually. Then only it will be much convenient for you to understand what all things are being written over here. So I have defined few steps that are required. First, you create a VPC. Then you create an internet gateway, followed by attach the internet gateway to the VPC, create a public subnet, then route table, followed by subnet route table association and a security group. So in this lecture, we'll be adding these many uh, resources to our VPC and also writing it stepwise. So let's get started. So now for the parameters, we'll go back and in this can see that there is a section which is for parameters. Over here they have given us different examples through which we can implement these parameters. So basically you can see that this is an instance type parameter which has got type, default, allowed values, along with description as the further sections. Okay. So we'll be making use of type, default, as well as description for our CIDRs. Now, to understand the concept of CIDR, you must know uh, the networking part of AWS. So I prefer 
you to understand the CIDR concept first and then only start actually working on this particular template. Okay, so I'll be typing VPC CIDR. So there are two CIDRs that we'll be using over here. One for the VPC and the other one for sub subnet. Okay, so we'll be mentioning both of them. What I mentioned over here is a logical ID followed by the type, which is string of course, default value, which I'll be assigning over here is this. You can assign any according to our, your requirement followed by description. Description is please enter VPC CIDR. Okay, the next one is for subnet. So subnet CIDR colon. This is a logical ID. Then we'll be mentioning type, which is again a string. Default value will be 10.0.0.0 slash 24, not 0 because it's 1. Okay. And then after that, we'll be mentioning the description, which is please enter CIDR for subnet okay. so now we are done with the parameters and after this what we'll be going to do is nothing but we'll be adding the resources stepwise okay so let's go to our sequence so the first thing that we need to create is vpc okay so let's go back let's go to template references then resource and property reference and within this we'll be selecting ec2 yeah so for amazon ec2 you can see here these many options or resource types can be added so the first one that I want to create is, of course, for the VPC. You can see this. I'll click on this and then we'll get a sample template. Like how is it? And also at the same time, we have also got the example. I'll be copying the example. For the resources, I'll be adding this particular template. And for this, I won't be using 16 as it is. I'll allow the user to enter it. Reference colon VPCCIDR. So it will be referencing to this particular parameter, which will be user specific. Okay. And within the key, I'll be entering name and for value, it will be my, my VPC. Okay. So now we are done with our VPC. Next is about creating an internet gateway. So in order to create an internet gateway, we'll again go back and over here we'll search for internet see over here you got this resource and you also got the template along with the example i'll be copying this particular example as it is 
and then I'll be pasting it over here. I'll keep the name as it is. But while copying, what you have to keep in mind or be aware of is that indentation plays a key role in our YAML files. So it's very important that you keep the indentation intact while pasting. So you can see that it was earlier this way, but it has to be this way. So don't forget to keep that indentation according to the syntax, okay? For key, I will be again naming it to be my internet gateway. Okay, so this is also done for now, right? Now the next thing that we'll have to create is or do is we need to attach the internet gateway to the VPC. This is the next step and for that what you need is you will require something which will attach our vpc to the internet gateway so for that we have got many such options you can see over here that we have got aws vpc gateway attachment so within this We'll get its complete template and an example as well. So I just copy the thing from here onwards. Control C. And here we are. Now again the indentation problem exists. Okay. So just move it slightly ahead so that it gets properly aligned for the VPC ID. So within this, you can see that while attaching VPC to Internet Gateway, we have to reference the VPC logical ID as well as the Internet Gateway's logical ID. So over here, since my a uh, logical ID of VPC is my VPC will have to modify it over here. And at the same time, we'll have to check whether the internet gateway ID, which is my gateway, internet gateway, matches this. Okay. So we are done with this attachment. Then what we have to do is we have to create a public subnet. Okay, so for this again, we will have to check for subnet. Now you can see that we got this particular resource type and the template followed by an example. So this is the example for what this subnet which we want to create. Again, it will, it has to every time be indented. At the same time, you have to check the syntax with reference also. So these two things, if you take care of, it's very easy for you to understand. Now, in this case, we can see that we have already defined a parameter of above over here, that is subnet CID. So we don't have to um, directly enter the value over here. Okay, so we'll just remove it and for the reference, it will be subnet CIDR. Okay, and for tags, name will be my public subnet okay so this is how we have now created our subnet the next thing is to create a route table so let's go again and search for route table 
Okay. So now you can see over here that this is the route table. And the help of example, be able to create it. Okay. Control V. And now you can see that we have referenced a VPC over here. For tags, I'll be adding name to be my route table. Okay. So now we are done with route table. After this, we'll have to add public route also. Okay. So now we'll go back again, search for route and here we go. Okay. So we'll be referencing route table in this particular route. Okay going ahead with this particular example we're pasting it over here working with the indentation is very important and i'll also remove this since we don't have any such thing in our this thing template so for route table id i'll be referencing to this particular route table and the gateway ID will be my internet gateway, which will be as it is. Okay. So now we are done with route as well. Okay. You can see that we have referenced route table along with the internet gateway. Okay. So these two things are very important, which you need to keep in mind. Okay. Now, after this, what we'll be adding out here onto our template is that we'll be associating a public subnet with the route table. So for that, we'll have to search for subnet route table association. You should know that you are associating what with what. Okay. So. Let's copy this template. Go over here, paste it. Now you can see that this is route table association, subnet route table association, where route table along with the subnet reference will be mentioned in here. Okay. So what is the subnet ID again. This is my subnet ID that is my public subnet. Okay, we'll be pasting it over here. Then for the route table ID, where is my route table? Yeah, over here. The name of my route table is my route table. I'll be referencing this over here, which is as it is, so I don't have to mention it or change it, modify it. Okay. The next thing after this is to create a security group. Let's go to that as well. Now we'll search for security group. You can see that resource type is available here as well. And considering the example, as of now, I'll just keep ingress and I won't make use of egress as of now. So I'll be pasting it over here. Yeah. You can see that the reference over here is for the VPC. And we'll be mentioning the security group ingress that is for which port, which ports should our internet traffic accessible. For one more thing, I can add it for 22 port as well. 
that is SSH. Okay. So in this way, we are done creating the whole template for VPC. Now we'll save this template and then go to our AWS, create stack. The template is already ready. Upload this template, choose file. And the name of my file is VPC. So I will be directly referencing it. Again, the, I think there is some error. Resource definition of is mal. My, so what's wrong with this? I don't think so that there is any issue over here. Let's try to understand what the error is. Resource definition is malformed. So I guess I need to mention one of those parameters. Let's go to VPC again. And in here we have got instance tenancy. And this instance tenancy can be dedicated, default or host. So I'll be keeping is default only. Let me check if this is the only problem. Control S. I'll now try with this. There is some, you must specify a stack ID displaying your stacks page. The problem was this that this VPC was not indented properly. See, indentation will always give you some sort of error. So please don't panic or this thing. It's okay if there are some errors. You will always learn out of it, right? So now it's working properly. I'll be adding the stack name as uh, my stack for VPC okay so this will be my stack name you can now see that for the subnet CIDR it's asking for us to enter the value and its default is what we have already mentioned in here right so these were the defaults that we had already mentioned right so next i'll be adding a tag of my instance the okay, rest of the things i'll be keeping as it is roll back all stack resources and hence we are done and submit now let's wait for a stack to create the sources. You can go to resources to view how many resources have been created. You can see that my VPC, my subnet route, so my subnet route table association, my route table, my route my public subnet, everything gets created. Yeah. 
so hope that's it for this lecture hope you liked the video please like share and subscribe the channel if you really found the videos useful also don't forget to press that bell icon so that you get all the new updates thank you so much have a nice day bye bye